There are a lot of unique engines at the National Railway Museum, but none are more unusual than the narrow gauge double boiler engine, Livingston Thompson. When you look around the ruby red engine, you would be forgiven this was two engines just soldered together. In part, you're right. The concept for this strange oddity was a man called Robert Francis Fairley. He studied mainland engines and concluded that they were inefficient, especially as they had to uncouple at the end of the line to either run around the train, meaning unnecessary track loops and avoider lines, costly space in turntables, and when either option was not available, running mainline engines tender first. He also wanted an engine that didn't carry extra weight through needing carrying wheels and not require a tender. Therefore, all of the engine's power can be used to hauling freight or passengers. Fairley drew up plans for an engine that was symmetrical, front and back. Now you may be forgiven that both share a boiler. This was not true. The two boilers are joined in the middle they share a firebox and one single dome is required. However, upon testing, it was realized that there was a problem with drafting, so the center was modified to accommodate for this. Eventually, after several attempts, the single firebox idea was scrapped and each engine carried its own separate firebox. The first fairly built, with Robert's approval, was known as the Little Wonder. This was built and designed by George England and Company and ran on the Festinog Narrow Gauge Railway from 1869 to 1882. Even though by rail standards the Little Wonder had a short life, its impact transformed the narrow gauge and soon lines were being built to accommodate this unique engine all over the world. In recognition of the Festinog's work to promote the Fairley, they were granted the exclusive rights to produce more locomotives without the exorbitant patent fees. Today, the Festinog Railway is considered the home of the Double Fairleys and continues this wonderful tradition of making these unique locomotives. This was in consideration a two-way partnership, as a unique build of this engine meant that the Festinog Railway did not need to have to build a second track and saved them a considerable amount of money and headaches from landowners. With regards to the National Railway Museum's acquisition, the Livingston Thompson, this wonderful little engine had gone through quite a few changes in its life. It was built in 1886 and was the number three engine. Even though it was the second locomotive to be built by the Festinog Railway Company at Boston Lodge, and the fourth of its type. It entered active service on the 29th of June 1886, following successful trials in the February. It was deemed very reliable, however it had to go through some minor repairs, in particular to strengthen its cab, reversing rods and new foundation ring, smoke box doors and fronts and new vacuum brakes. The brake gears also had to be replaced following an accident with a sheep. In 1896 it was decided to give the engine its first major overhaul. Luckily the engine was in relatively good shape and all that needed to be replaced was the copper rivets around the foundation rings with iron ones. Mechanical breakdowns caused the engines to be retubed twice. Once was due to a blowout, while the second was down to the type of coal, causing the tube tubings to corrode. Further modifications were made and in 1901, after a further two tubes burst, red tubes were fitted. And in January 1904, the engine had another accident and was forced to undergo further repair to its cylinders. In 1905, the engine was fitted with its first brand new boilers. I went through a second overhaul. It had two new smoke boxes and major repairs to the tanks and new injectors. This increased the boiler pressure to 170 pounds per square inch. Livingston Thompson had a regular happy working life with only minor repairs. However, in 1907, a piece of its cylinder was blown through its own chimney, 
and once again the water tanks were becoming a concern and were patched during the following years. 1921 Livingston Thompson came in for its third major overhaul. However, it wasn't sent for repair until 1929 and at this time it had entered repairs and had a new firebox and was renamed Tallison. A fourth overhaul in 1938 was requested and this included complete retubing. However, due to the shortage of men following the war effort, this work was unfinished and still was unfinished when the railway stopped working in 1946. It was almost 10 years later that Tallison was rediscovered, exactly in the same condition as it was left. She was repaired and put back into service with a full boiler retubing new cylinder and this was done by the Falcon Foundry. They also allowed her to have a brand new elephant chime whistle and was finally back out on the line September 1956. In 1961 Tallison was renamed after the Duke of Edinburgh and was called the Earl of Monorith and went through a further overhaul in 1967 and was run with repainted white wall tires. In 1971, after reaching the end of its boiler ticket, it was deemed that the boiler was beyond economic repair and the Earl was placed into storage. Plans were finalised to make the Earl much more modern, but this caused obvious uproar as the Earl was one of the last remaining Victorian double Fairlie engines and a peal was created to save him. While all this was going on, he was stripped of the buggy wheels as they were needed elsewhere and was left in a shed in the yard another engine took on the Earl's name. She was once again rediscovered in 1984 and after several talks was earmarked for preservation. However, due to lack of volunteers, it was decided to restore her to only a towable condition. The previous name Tallison was given to another engine and she was restored to Living Thompson, Livington Thompson once more. Work began in 1988 to restore the body into a condition fit for display. Bogies were specially constructed from unfit parts and spare parts from Boston Lodge and it was decided to give the Livingston Thompson its original 1905 liv livery which was its last major overhaul that the engine ever had. After an official ceremony in 1988 handing her over to the Mas National Railway Museum, Livingston Thompson has been put on permanent loan with the occasional trip to its original line. Today you can still see the Livingston Thompson sat behind its larger counterparts. <laughs>